If you've been watching the constant stream of incredibly exciting internet-enabled technology appearing in tech news, crowdfunding sites, and if you're like me, quite possibly in boxes, building up in various rooms of your house, then this course is for you. The Internet of Things is here and is growing rapidly. It's a great time in the world of technology and an adventurous time for all those keen developers who like to tinker with new things. My name is Patrick Catanzariti and I'm a developer from Sydney who really enjoys exploring the emerging Internet of Things and what it can do. This course is a summary of the core ideas and techniques that I have come across throughout my initial years of looking into the Internet of Things and JavaScript. This course is intended to be for developers who have yet to step into the world of the Internet of Things, but are keen to give it a go. It may also be useful for those who have worked with the Internet of Things before, but are keen to learn how you can access various devices via JavaScript. The course is especially good for web developers out there who have already been using JavaScript for years and are interested in seeing how they can bring their JavaScript skills beyond the web. I personally come from a web development background, so I was in the third category when I got started with all this too. In the course, we'll be building a simple Internet of Things enabled dashboard. The dashboard will show us the status of various sensors we've got, like temperature, sound, light, and so forth, along with providing buttons to turn on devices in our environment, like a doorbell or an LED light. It's designed to build up a base project so that you can add your own functionality and take the initial concepts as far as your imagination can take you. Add your own sensors, your own tech, whatever you'd like. There are a huge range of different devices out there in the Internet of Things that often do very similar functions using different approaches. It's quite tough to cover absolutely every device and what they can do. So in this course, I'll be aiming to cover the basics of a variety of devices I could get my hands on. I've aimed for a bit of overlap between some lessons. We'll do similar things on a few devices throughout the course, so you can focus on the lessons applicable to the particular device or devices that you own. You won't need to have every device we cover in the course to be able to get value from it. The more devices you have, though, the more you'll be able to experiment with adding them all together. It's definitely not a prerequisite, though, that you have everything. The course aims to be relatively basic and focuses on the fundamentals of passing messages and events between devices and the server. This way, the techniques we use can be adapted to any other device you might own. You can just swap the API of one device for the API of your own, and you should be able to follow along. You'll see examples of how you can add and replace different devices with different APIs by seeing how we handle recreating similar modules in the course with different devices. If you don't already own any devices, that's quite OK. They're readily available online and often ship quite quickly, even to faraway places like my home of Australia. My favorite microcontroller in the course, for those who might not have any devices just yet, is the Spark Core, which is quite simple to set up and isn't overly expensive. Two of my other favorite bits of tech to tinker with are the Pebble Watch and the Leap Motion, both of which are also inexpensive and easy to buy online. The course is focused on beginners, so don't worry, we won't get into any complicated wire soldering or opening up electronics. We'll be focusing on software quite a lot of the time. The closest electronics work we'll cover is setting up basic breadboard layouts when working with Arduinos and such. If you've no idea what that is, that's totally OK. It's not too hard, and if you're able to handle building Lego and following diagrams, you'll handle breadboards A-OK. -okay. I've got a few bits of assumed knowledge, just so we don't spend the whole time explaining non-internet of things related stuff. The course assumes you know the basics of JavaScript and Node. However, I will explain some of the initial setup of a Node server. I'll also explain a little bit about some of the newer development frameworks I'll be using, such as Gulp and Browserify. If you're a developer who has their own preferences for frameworks and building web apps, that's totally OK too. The course examples can be translated to use whatever approach you desire. And if you're a developer like me, you want to try and rearrange things anyway. My way of adding JavaScript modules, as another example, in the course is very basic and could definitely be rebuilt using JavaScript frameworks like Angular, Backbone, Ember, Meteor, and so on in a much nicer way. For this course, though, I thought that'd be a bit too much for non-web developers to follow. If some of this is completely new to you, there are plenty of resources online that can get you up to speed or clarify anything you're uncertain of. I definitely recommend reading up on JavaScript and Node. It'll make things easier to understand if you are unfamiliar with them. I'm also available on Twitter and via email if you get completely lost. I'll give my details at the end of this video. The Internet of Things is still a new and emerging area to be teaching and training about, so there really isn't a standard way of showing all of this in an online course. I've tried to put it all together in the simplest yet fairest way to try and ensure that you can learn the basics without needing to have too many devices to do so. I've aimed to do that whilst still keeping it open for you to be able to add in lots of devices if and when you have them. Feel free to provide feedback on how well the course structure works for you, as well as ask any questions by getting in touch with me on Twitter at thatpatrickguy or via email at pat at patcat.com. 
I'm always happy to hear from fellow developers and people experimenting with the Internet of Things. I really do hope this course can help start you on the path towards lots of very enjoyable Internet of Things tinkering. There is so much that's possible and it can be a lot of fun.